Okay, so both players are seated and we have Roger Gas Socrates. No, not Roger Gas, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, we're just gonna correct the names in a few moments. It's not Roger Gas Socrates. It's Papadakis Bill and he's playing Zen Master. We saw him on camera. We saw him on camera in the previous rounds, and we have Cap uh, Nick Caponis on the other side of the table playing a deck we haven't seen uh, today in our future material, and this is Dan Midrange. So now we're going to take a look at we're going to take a look at the lists, and I'm more interested in Caponis's deck because it's you know it's the midrange, it's it's actually very aggressive to play four voices, four brain matches, three Adjani, Scholar of Pride, four Detentions, three Lost of the Spiders, Policeman Lion, Brave the Elements, Racing Captain, the Salisnia Charm, the Flower God of Police, and which actually means that we are getting ready to. Of course, Papadakis will choose to be on the draw or on the play, and this is actually going to be really interesting. So, we are going to. Give the players the okay, the, okay, uh, the go sign, and we will be back. Okay, so uh, both players have started. Uh, we all are also starting our time now. And right now we have Bill. Let's see if we have any mulligans first. So right now, I don't think. Right now, I don't think. Oh, we have a mulligan from the Palaikis. That's very unfortunate for Zen Masters. And as we said before, Caponis's list is like. It's not that much mid range. It's more like aggressive, but the creatures are really good, so, you know, they can, you know, hold the ground in the middle of the game. For example, Gorgi Resurgence is, is an aggressive drop, at, you know, costing two mana. And Brimas, of course, were a basic place of a controlling creature. A giant of color of pride can make for some huge swings, but what gives the deck away as a, you know, uh, aggressive deck, basically, is the use of bravely elements. Okay, so let's see if I like this. He's still something. And right now, of course, detention switch can take care of problematic cards. Uh, so this is our can take care of the green red bands of the Gen Masters bands because if you can remove all Karnos or Peter, you can remove them. You cannot remove the monsters. Uh, you cannot remove some of the dragon because it's action. Also, right now, let's see. Uh, we have a forest and a Ludwig's Mystic from the Gen Masters player. Always a good start to see. And Caponis is going to go for the Skyline. He's gonna go for the Skyland into the card that's gonna remain on top. Into the card that's gonna remain on top, and we have another Elvis Mystic, the Village Elvis Mystic taps along, among, along with the Forest Forest, so when carry added. And we have another Skyland, Sky is the card on top, which I believe it I believe to be another land. But then Papalite is draws for his turn, he has five one available. He's gonna deploy and portion two fix. Which is gonna reveal an Elvis Mystic. Now another land gets played, a life is gained for the Porsche Crucifix player. He's gonna be now at 21 life total. And he's gonna tap with both his Elvis Mystics, which is gonna drop Caponis's death. Caponis's life total down to 18. Let's see, let's take a look at the Caponis's hand. This is the turn where he has to play something. He plays a soft land. And reduce his life total down to 16. And reduce his life total down to 16. Place a lot of the fighter and pass the turn back. And after this mystic is going to the hand, then a Stormbird Dragon is revealed out of course of Prufix. The Elvis Mystic is then deployed to the field and turn goes back to Kamonis. He will untap. And right now, if he gets to play another big threat, this is the time where he's gonna get the game. He's gonna have the game in the back. He has a far god of police, not get devoted, but he can get he can draw some cards. Right now, what he needs is something along the lines of the tension sphere, which is gonna take care of all the Elvis mystics. But 
even if he has that, I'm not really sure that he wants to do that. So right now, Lux and Dorm Smite are going into the red zone, dropping. Have a light is down, 270 life. Dropping Pepe Light is down to 70 life, and the Burmas King of Wars cause comes down, making blocking very difficult, very, making attacking very difficult for Pepe Light. So Pepe Light is going to draw for his turn, and the card revealed for um, Course of Proof is going to be a Xenagos the Reveler. Of course, Tomb Breath Dragon attacks, takes Sneak down to 14 life, to, I'm, sure, I'm sorry, 12 life. And Nick is gonna tap, untap, and he really needs an answer for Stormbreath Dragon, but I don't think there is one in his main deck. Let me check to be sure again. Yeah, I don't see any answer to Stormbreath Dragon really. The only thing that he can do against Stormbreath Dragon is basically try to, you know, outrace him, and this is really tough. We see him scrying and thinking about the scry, contemplating whether, whether to keep the card on top or the bottom. He decides to keep the... Um, not yet, he hasn't decided yet, my bad. So, I really don't think that he can deal with a Stormbird Dragon, but much more with the Xenagos that's coming next turn. Much like with the Xenagos that's coming next turn. Okay, so... Right now, he's still contemplating about this. Oh no, the Scry was kept on top. And a giant color of pride is summoned to the field. He's gonna give. He's gonna go up in loyalty, targeting. He's gonna go up in loyalty, targeting what? He's gonna think for a while. I believe that. Brimas is a nice target since you know you get to make some tokens with it. But uh, what you can actually do, okay, I'm gonna go up in loyalty and put a counter on Brimas, yeah. So I am expecting to see an attack from the King of Wars Coast, which will represent a five point swing. He, oh, everybody gets in the red zone because you know. Actually, Nick knows as well that he cannot win against Tomber Dragon, he cannot remove it from the field, so his only chance is to outrace Bill. Let's see if Habil decides to block. block. So Corsa gets in front of the Cat Soldier, and uh, I'm not really sure. Bill wants to monster his guy for the next turn, and he wants to do that with either Xenagos or, you know, the Mana Dogs. So he must come carefully as not to, you know, drop so low that he cannot do that. And I mean so low, not in life total, but in uh, but in number of monsters on the field. And by number of monsters, because every mana drop that, any, every mana drop that dies actually removes two mana from his pool, not just one. Because it's a two mana that he's, one mana that he's going to produce, plus another mana that he's going to come towards for the, you know, Xenagos ability. So right now, let's see, Corsa has jammed in front of the Cat Soldier and we're still waiting for the blocks. And right now, this is a very really hard decision to make. Do you throw away your guys or do you keep them around for Xenagos? This is a really difficult race right now. It's a really difficult race right now. Don't really know how she's gonna make it. Right now, as so right now we see an Elvis Mystic jumping in the front of the King of Wars because in four damage dealt. Be reducing his life total down to 13. So, right now, this is the big turn where you get to deploy Xenagos, the Reveler, and you would actually monster your Stomp Attack and attack with everything, then jump luck to stay alive, then attack with the dragon again to win the, to win the whole thing. So, here comes Xenagos. Bill is counting how many permanents he has. Ups the count, ups the loyalty counters to four, makes enough mana for the Stormbird Dragon to get monsters. So 
Stormblood Dragon is gonna deal 4 damage plus 5 damage. This is oh, all the damage is redirected to a Johnny Color Cry so that he cannot make a monster fight. So we see 10 damage going to. So we see 10 damage going to Caponis' face, and this is really the time where you realize that you cannot outrace an um, active Stormblood Dragon. So Active, and by active, I mean just on the field. And that's really hard for Kamonis, who just do a voice of resurgence, which is apparently of no help at this point. Okay, so that's it for the first match. Kamonis scoops it up, scoops them up, because, you know, apparently his main deck cannot deal with the Storm the Dragon. So, uh, let's see side deck options. <laughs> Again, so Caponis right now has hybridization. This is going to go in for the Stormblood Dragon. It's going back the verdict. I believe this is for the way too aggressive decks. Maybe he likes them. He has an Elspeth Sun Champion, which is definitely going to go in. And the Finslayer Paladin, which I'm not really sure if he wants it or not. He dodges. That dodges all the removal spells. So, but he doesn't want right now. is a fire. I believe a fire. I don't know where it is go for my tastes. I'm not really sure. Also, let's move on to the sideboard. In the sideboard, I see two misguided hydras, three, well, three misguided hydras, three nine disciple, one ultimate prize. This is gonna go in double gold by time. This um, hasn't seen the tension sphere. Maybe he, he suspects the tension sphere, but he's not really sure. So I'm not. I'm not overly confident that that's going to be his main deck going into games 2 and 3. On Future 5, this can go into the main deck as it is another removal spell. One Braska the Ancient, uh, this can actually you know, make it to the top, to the main deck again. Two Rakdos is returned. Rakdos is returned, very useful into taking care of the Planeswalkers. Basically, you strip the hands and you kill Planeswalker and suddenly you are you know, like way ahead of your opponent. And one of Rakdos also going to go in. So right now, what we what we will see, we will see most likely is Papa like is trying to play the uh, you know the control deck, having a lot of removal spells, while at the same time trying to overpower his opponent. Basically, he's going to be the mid range deck. He's going to be uh, he's will try to be the more effective mid range deck, where uh, the band uh, player Nick uh, will try to outrace his opponents before he stumbles. Uh, before his stormbird dragons hit the field and you know make his life you know really miserable. So right now, yeah, I mean, from my perspective, it's anybody's game. That uh, and I don't know. We we will see. Most likely, it's gonna be. Uh, hopefully, it's gonna be a very long game, and we we'll get to see some really nice plays from you know both sides. We we'll get to see some nice plays from both sides. Now moving on, I believe Nick to be the one favored because his cards are more generic. I mean, Defensive Sphere is a good it's a good removal that can also hit planes workers. John does have a huge downfall, but huge downfall doesn't take care of you know permanence in general. Just take care. Actually, oh there no, it's on my, oh. Yeah, there's a fire that cannot be destroyed by the that cannot be destroyed by the temple, but that's it. So it's pretty even, I guess. I would I haven't really tested the deck that much, the bad big rates deck, but I could see them being a 50-50. Maybe a 60-40 after you know sideboarding in favor of the Jan Masters next to all the removal they get warding. All right, now the players are softened up, and we're, we get to the game, you know, in short time. Right now, I'm, I'm going to take this opportunity to remind you that this live stream is brought to you by Razor's Edge Gaming. What we are is a gaming hub that features that features that feature stuff like live coverage of card game events, of esports events, 
And you can also find guides, articles, and our sponsor teams on our website, Sundebilans website, on our Facebook page. You can find past coverage on our YouTube page, Razor Sage Gaming. Also, be sure to follow us, subscribe, and click the like button in all the social media that you can possibly get. We couldn't be happier to have you in our, you know, you know, family together, sharing coverage and live stuff with you. So moving on, we're gonna have the players starting with our, the game. They, it's gonna be some lands played on both sides, and Papalages is oh, it's an outer an outer forest. Uh, he looks like a hulk. <laughs> That's actually really good. And moving on, we have uh, Course of Crucifix. He's gonna reveal the top card. The top card. It's gonna be a forest. Uh, you see the last of the players walking out. And I'm finding it all. <laughs> I am all alone right now. But it's fine. So. Land of the top four from Corsair, of course, Corsair having a huge effect on the on the game state when it's played because it actually lets you draw cards in you know in the vague sense of things. So because because you're gonna play immutable right now from the top of your deck, because you're gonna play immutable from the top of your deck, that actually means that you are not drawing that mutable. So in in a sense, you've gone one card deeper into your deck without actually drawing the card. It's the same as drawing the card, but it's even better because it puts it into the into the game. So Caponis right now ha is having mana problems. He's gonna discard for him for his turn. Course of Kufix is gonna reveal Polukarnas War Dater, and things are looking pretty grim. So right now we have a Skyland. This guy is gonna be tabled on top. Animate the mutable. Swing for four. What basic what Nick is trying to do basically is take advantage of Caponis's weak. No weak opening. He's gonna make a Selesnya charm, which is gonna be answered by the ultimate price. I th can you do that? I mean, I'm not really sure you can do that. I'm not really sure that token is monocolored. Or we are gonna have to check out with our judge. This is this main lion being deployed on the field for Nick. And I'm gonna, I'm just gonna make sure in a bit. And we, I will be right back. I just need to make sure about the uh, night. Time. Okay, yeah. So I, I was wrong. Sorry. Uh, the token is monocolored. So right now we have Corsair Prefix, who has gained some life, which I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to update. So right now we have Nick. Yeah, so we're getting the updated life totals right now. I've missed a couple of, you know, course activations. The players didn't miss it. The players didn't miss them. Uh, when, right now, we have Nick in a very difficult, you know, in a very difficult spot, in a very tough spot, because he's facing down a board that's, you know, almost fully developed. He's facing down a huge threat in the form of course of proof. It's an immutable that can shrink at him anytime. And, What's worse, he's stuck on mana. And he do his third land, but his opponent's already at five lands. So any and he has a scavenging goose on top. Scavenging goose is a very crucial card in the matchup. So uh you, no, it's actually a soft land that can simply play top and black crit gets rebuilt. Four course of Kruvix land crit is gonna get played. Only one life will be lost because basically what's gonna be is yeah, that you are gonna gain a life and you are gonna lose two life so to put it short and this is a storm breath dragon which is gonna go to the dome and at this point it's very difficult for it has a verdict in his hand but it's actually very difficult for him to resolve that he needs the correct land that comes into play and after that 
is sometimes very difficult in monocolor decks. So I swing from Polukanos Ward Eater and from the Snow White Dragons. Let's see if Nick will try to some block or will try his luck at finding an untapped land for his arrival to have realization of his hand. I don't think this is gonna matter. And one, it's gonna hybridize the dragon. And this is fine from Papalakis side. Papalakis side. So, we, the fleece main jumps in front of the Lucranos. However, nothing is too big for the war beater, so. Alright, now Nick is gonna take a turn and draw a card. And does he have it? No, he doesn't. It's a temple, and temple is not coming to play untapped, so it's gonna be pretty difficult for him to survive the turn with monsters polygons incoming. So let's see. We got a draw from an Everless Mystic, and let's see if that is it. Right now, the damage on board is uh, 3, 5, uh, 5 plus 5, it equals 10. 10 and it has a monster in the grave, so it's 13, and there is. I believe in Mutable, so it's almost game. One life is gonna be gained from Corpse of Toolfix. Player is gonna go up to 23 life points. And we have another Stormbird Dragon, and I believe this to be it. There's a news, and there's a Flace Main and a Stormbird Dragon in the graveyard. There's just no point in continuing anymore. This is actually game, no matter how he does it. Of course, we'll, we'll attack with everything right now. And it's Nick's turn to decide if he wants to do anything. Oh, there are no. Oh, he can leave. Actually, I'm really sorry, guys. He can leave because there are, there are no mana for you know the ooze to activate. There are no mana for the ooze to activate. Uh, to activate the ooze, yeah. So we have rabbit hybridization. Hit for Lucanus. Turns him into a three-three lizard. And right now the damage taken is gonna be is gonna be huge. We have two, four, four, five, four, seven, seven, eleven, eleven, and two. And the swing back from Mutable is unfortunately gonna end the game, making it a 2 0 in favor of Papadakis. 